Hey everyone, AYBL Main here. I finally logged back in here on a Sunday after taking Saturday off for a long day of tennis and wanted to jump back into my top five albums for every year that I've been alive. And I'm sitting here at 1972. <sighs> Great year again, guys. Uh, Neil Young's Harvest definitely is in my top five here. He's got Old Man, The Needle and the Damage Done on that album. It's a classic. I still like After the Gold Rush for its songwriting a little bit better. But Harvest is still such a tremendous album that it definitely had to be mentioned in my top five. Also in my top five, I've got Stevie Wonder's Talking Book. And that album kind of began that, that five album run where Stevie dominated in the 70s. He dominated on the charts. He dominated the Grammys. Uh, I believe even Bob Dylan had given an acceptance speech in which he uh, thanked Stevie for not putting out any albums that particular year. Talking Book has uh, You Are the Sunshine of My Love and it's got Superstition on it. So it's a great album. Uh, always worth checking out Stevie's material if, if you've never dived in. Start in the early 70s and dive in there and you're, you're not going to be disappointed. Uh, also in that top five is uh, Nick Drake's Pink Moon. Nick Drake is a... Elliot Smith, before Elliot Smith even knew he was Elliot Smith, right? It's that same type of tonal sound, that nice just plain guitar work and these, these wonderfully dark uh, layered lyrics. And uh, I, I just love it. Pink Moon was gr uh, great. Also, he had a, a, uh, two other albums before that. But right after he released Pink Moon, he, uh, he, he passed away. He, he, uh, he, took, he took his own life and it was really sad. And uh, he was such a tremendous talent. It would have been wonderful to see what he could have done. So uh, I put Nick Drake there because if you haven't listened to Pink Moon, you should just give that a try if you're into some, some indie, folk, rock type of stuff. This is like a precursor to a lot of those things. Um, also in my top five, I've got uh, uh, Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars by uh, David Bowie. Probably the premier glam rock po uh, proto-punk album that you need to listen to. Huge fan of Starman. I also like Rock and Roll Suicide, this, which is the bookend track on side two. You really should check that out. Uh, it's a great album, and, and I, I'm really sorry that I missed out on it in my early years. I circled back around to it just a few years ago on my list of 1,001 albums I wanted to listen to, and I was really disappointed in myself that I never gave David Bowie a try. That's a great album. you got to check it out. But number one for me, and it's a new number one because, you know, even just a few months ago, I had a different number one here. It's Steely Dan's Can't Buy a Thrill. It is a fantastic album. I just love the musicianship in this, the production value in this. Uh, listen to Do It Again, uh, Dirty dirty Work, um, Reeling in the Years, all great songs. You should really check it out. It is definitely worthwhile. So Steely Dan's my number one, Can't Buy a Thrill. Uh, my album uh, that everybody said I was going to love but didn't, it, it's a band that I, just, I, I don't really like a lot of their material, and I've listened to everything. I've listened to At Fillmore East. I've listened to Brothers and Sisters and Idle Wide South, I, and then I've listened to this one, Eat the Peach, and I just are, am not into these jam session albums. I like it when a band just puts out songs, and they put out songs that that's got a nice flow to them, you know, because sequencing is, is important. But what I don't like is when you, you put out a, uh, an album and you say it's 45 to 50 minutes long and two of the songs on there account for like 32 to 35 of the minutes and it's just one big jam session. While I appreciate that the Allman Brothers are a fantastic set of musicians, what I have to tell you is, is I'm not impressed with having to listen to an album which is just allowing someone to get up there and jam. If I want to see somebody jam, I'd love to see it in a live setting. That's okay. But I'm not, I don't want to buy an album that goes forward in perpetuity and it's just one big jam session album. So it just doesn't appeal to me at all. Eat the Peach is my album that everybody said I should love, but I didn't. That's what I got for today, guys. I'm going to jump in for 1973 up in the, in the upcoming days. I've got a couple tennis matches this week, so I don't know where I'm going to fit them in. But, uh, but look for those videos soon. I really appreciate you guys. Hit the subscribe button if you don't mind. Like the video. I'm doing this for me. But if you like to jump aboard, that's fine. I don't mind the shade. Thanks. Bye-bye.